Villains are a product of the time period they were born in. As times change, so too do our villains and their priorities, with some being reinvented and other previously good characters defecting to the side of evil. Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. And I'm your host, Adam Andrews, and this is the top 10 newest Marvel Comics villains. Number 10, The Builders. The Builders are a recent addition of the Marvel Rogues Gallery, only recently approaching their 10th year of existence in the comics, which makes them sound old, but really relative to comic book history, they're still pretty new, because Marvel Comics, I think, has been going on for like 80 years. Whoa! The Builders are a race of beings who claim to have created most of the known worlds in the universe, seeding worlds and influencing the development of civilizations for eons. They are also said to be a perfect race of beings, and when the multiverse appears to be dying as a result of incursions, they take it upon themselves to clean up the mess by wiping out complete worlds and empires, which puts them at odds with the heroes of Earth during the Infinity crossover event. Number 9, The Black Winter. Ready to be slightly confused? Good. So the Marvel multiverse rebirths itself whenever it gets destroyed. Right now the multiverse is currently in its 8th version. Everything prior to the most recent secret wars and the incursions and the battle world and all that took place in the 7th version. Before that came to be there was, get this, the 6th version. And when that version was destroyed only one being survived. That would be the character who became Galactus. Well now we know how the 6th cosmos was destroyed and ooh it's scary. The 6th cosmos was actually consumed consumed by an entity called the Black Winter, essentially a living storm of destruction and entropy on a multiversal scale, like Galactus but for universes. Kind of. When the Black Winter ate the sixth cosmos, it allowed Galen, Galactus's real name, to live on into the seventh cosmos and serve as its herald. Now, funnily enough, Galactus mostly ignored his heralding duties until the day the Black Winter showed up in the seventh cosmos in 2019. Galactus turned to Thor for help, but the two were unable to cooperate, and Thor wound up slaying Galactus, something the Black Winter prophesied would actually happen. Then Thor turned the corpse of Galactus into a power cosmic explosion and blew up the Black Winter. But before it went away, it showed Thor how he will perish at the hands of Thanos wielding an infinity stone encrusted Mjolnir. So now we have that to look forward to. Number 8, Mr. Misery. Mr. Misery is a Doctor Strange villain that was actually created by Doctor Strange himself. Some people create their own villains. Oof. Some people are their own villains. Ah. Mr. Misery was a creature that embodied all the pain and misery that Strange had suffered from using magic during his time as Sorcerer Supreme. The beast was also commonly referred to as the Thing in the Cellar. At least, well, that's what it was originally referred to as. We'll get to that in a second. The Thing in the Cellar was released when all magic was threatened during the attack of the technological army known as Imperial. Mr. Misery is actually the name the creature took for itself after Doctor Strange was forced to reckon with it following its accidental release. Strange freed the creature by depositing his suffering and pain instead into the people that he had saved, dividing it up so that each only carried a small piece of it within them. These people were also willing to do so as they had been saved by Strange in the past. So they were like, yo, Strange is my guy, I'll take a little bit of pain for you, no problem. Even after being freed, Mr. Misery continued to crave the pain and suffering of others. Which is, you know, why he took the name Mr. Misery and became a villain. Or they. It. It's kind of like a blob. Number 7. Horticulture. Ever since I learned about this group, I will take any opportunity to talk about them. Horticulture is a group of four older women between the ages of 64 to 81 who are all expert botanists. They are Augusta Brones, Lily Lamus, Edith Scutch, and Opal Vetiver. And their goal is simple. Uh, Sort of. Essentially, they want to bring Earth back to a more pristine time. A time when it had about 7 billion less people on it. Yes, these ladies want to basically exterminate most of the Earth's human population and bring plants back to the forefront. And specifically flowers, which is kind of a lovely idea, sort of. This goal brings them into conflict with the X-Men in 2019's X-Men number 3. Because the nation of Krakoa, that the mutants call home, have been mass producing these flowers with different bio and tech purposes, and these ladies would like to use them for their villainous goals. Beyond biological modifications believed to have been made to themselves, the women of horticulture are experts at manipulating the environment to suit their extinction agenda. And they're also computer programmers, selling software to the anti-mutant group Orcus to monitor Krakoan gateways. So now you know. 
Number 6, Cordyceps Jones. Although we might not be as new as some of the other villains mentioned here, Cordyceps Jones is still a relatively new villain, if you've been out of comics for the last few years at least. He first appeared back in 2017 in Rocket issue number 4 and was created by Al Ewing and Adam Gorham. Cordyceps Jones is known for having a salacious reputation across the cosmos. He's a 30,000 year old fungal parasite who due to his longevity has made an intergalactic fortune and is known for owning many successful casinos across the cosmos. Recently, he appeared in the X-Men series where he seems to be threatening the existence of Earth, setting up a bet for fun to see who can be the first to wipe it out. Cause you know, that's what you do when you're a rich fungal parasite and you've been around for too long. That's what happens, you like, gotta make some bets. Number 5, The Sinister Adaptoid. Okay, so the Super Adaptoid ain't no kind of new villain either, but an Adaptoid that takes on the abilities and likeness of all the members of the Sinister Six, that's certainly something new. In Amazing Spider-Man number 6 from 2022, which also happens to mark Amazing Spider-Man number 900 in legacy numbering, a second and improved version of the living brain emerges as the story's primary antagonist on Peter Parker's birthday. His main goal? Trying to find out who Spider-Man is. To that end, he kidnapped all of Spider-Man's most frequently deadly foes, the Sinister Six, and created a super adaptoid with them. It's like 25 feet tall, strong, fast, zappy, honor obsessed, eight legged, mysterious, and it likes to quote some of the Six's lines. Spider-Man ends up having to team up with the captured Six villains to fight the adaptoid, but it's actually the villains inability to properly work together that makes the adaptoid malfunction and destroy itself. It's kind of funny how that works. As for the living brain, he ends up switching sides when Spider-Man refuses to let the Six destroy it and saves the day before revealing it actually already knows Peter's real name. Kind of weird. Number 4. Orcus. Orcus is the entire villainous organization that first appeared in House of X issue number 1. Back when Dawn of X was just starting up and it was all fresh and new and we were like, ah, a new mutant thing and it's so good. And now we're like, please don't ever end, but it's probably going to end soon. So I'll just go into the closet and cry forever. Don't worry about it. Orcus is an anti-mutant organization that is pro-human and as such is all about the advancement of AI, such as Nimrod and Sentinels, to help protect humanity against the growing mutant threat. I feel like there's going to be people, some people in the comments who are going to say, actually Nimrod is technically a Sentinel and you're right, but also, da da da, don't worry about it. Orcus sees mutant evolution as a threat to humanity's existence, but little do they know, the AI they're creating is likely to serve as an even greater threat to humanity's existence in the future, based on everything that we've seen and every alternate universe we've ever explored where that has continued. Many have joined Orcus since we were first introduced to them with even a few mutants betraying their own kind to join their ranks. Number 3, Uranus. Okay, technically this guy actually appeared in What If number 24 in September of 1980, but 1. He looks completely different, 2. He wasn't doing anything until now, and 3. He's cool so I don't really care. Uranus the Undying is Thanos' grand uncle and one of the deadliest beings in the Marvel Universe. Uranus, like every Eternal, was created by the Celestials one million years ago, but he believed the Eternals best fulfilled their purpose if they exterminated both the Deviants and the humans, all life outside the universe, and imprisoned the Celestials. Luckily, his brothers Kronos and Oceanus disagreed, plunging the Eternals into civil war. Now he ultimately lost that war and was captured by his brothers and became the first Eternal to be imprisoned within the exclusion, where he stayed for over half a million years because of the failsafe he imposed upon the machine. That failsafe being that if he dies, his greatest celestial design weapons will be unleashed. Recently, mutants have been revealed to be related to deviants, making the X-Men enemies to the Eternals and the Eternal Druig called on Uranus for help in Axe Judgment Day number one. And to show how powerful he is, in a matter of 20 minutes, Uranus eradicated Cable, Magneto, and David Hall otherwise known as Legion, along with a bunch of other very powerful mutants. He's scary. Number 2, Annihilation. Annihilation was at first a mysterious villain who appeared in the X-Books. Eventually, however, we learned that Annihilation was actually a demonic and possessive force which had taken over Genesis, who was forced to take up the Golden Helm of Annihilation after defeating the villain. It was basically a losing battle either way, as if Genesis lost, she would have died, but in winning, she was forced to take up the helm and then lead the demonic forces of Amen, which had so long plagued Arako and its people. So, it's like a 
you win, you lose, and if you lose, you lose. Genesis turned out as well to be the long lost wife of Apocalypse. Apocalypse had left his wife, children, and people eons ago in an attempt to help saving Arako from the Amenthi forces that threatened to one day overtake it. In the end, Apocalypse, with the assistance of Saturnine, helped to free Genesis from the hold of annihilation, and the helm was turned into a staff that was less influential on its host and more easily used as a tool instead of, you know, possessing the will of whomever possessed it. Annihilation had their first appearance in X Men issue number 12 from 2020. Number one, Monolith. This likely villain is so new it was hard to even find information about her. First appearing in July of 2022, which is last month, unless you're in the future, in Hulk number nine, Monolith is the very strong, big pink queen of Hulk Planet. Hulk Planet is set to be the title of the new Hulk story arc taking place after Hulk's whole Titan Hulk thing and the fight with Thor that just took place. The planet itself is situated right next to a gamma emitting star, so if you haven't guessed yet, Hulk Planet is indeed a planet covered in Hulks. Hmm. Banner, piloting the starship Hulk, finds the Hulk planet while on a mission for isolation. Instead, he meets Monolith, who offers him a place among the other Gamma beings where Hulk can exist in peace. But of course, there seems to be more to Monolith than meets the eye, and we kind of just have to wait until we can find out more information. It is likely safe to assume that as the leader of a planet of Gamma mutates, Monolith is very strong and very powerful. Will Hulk find peace? That's not usually how it goes, but only time will tell. Looks like we have reached the end of the video, but thankfully you are now armed with the knowledge of 10 new villains to go and check out if you haven't already. Let us know in the comments if you're going to check any of them out and which ones you are feeling most excited to check out. And don't forget to like and subscribe here at Top 10 Nerd while you're at it. But for now, we have been your hosts, Adam Andrews. And Amanda McKnight. Thanks for watching and peace out, nerds. See you later, nerds. Stay nerdy.